This is a video for Anya, a college sophomore who was told by her pre-med advisor that she would never get into medical school. The same advisor told her that she would have to do a master's program to even have a chance at a DO medical school. And this is at the beginning of Anya's sophomore year, by the way. Anya wanted to know if she truly had a chance or not, whether she should completely pivot and go to a different career. Anya, thank you for messaging me on TikTok about this, but TikTok is not really a definitive platform to give you this very long-winded answer. So this video is to give you a more complete response. Anya, your college advisor is both very right and very wrong at the same time. No sophomore should be told that they will never get into medical school. From my perspective, that's completely inappropriate. Your advisor is right in that there's a ton of things you need to do before you're ever remotely competitive for a medical school. So we can leave our emotions and egos at the door and focus on what we can do now to get better. It sounds like you're already in that mindset from that text. And because you're already demonstrating that level of maturity, I'm going to be harder on you here. And that's because I believe in you. You know that there is some truth in what your advisor is saying. And I know it too. The most important thing is that no one is coming to save you. Not your professors, not your parents, not your advisor, not me. You are in the driver's seat, and right now, the decisions that you make for your pre-med journey today will impact how competitive you are when you apply. First off, your GPA is 3.27 after a single year of college. That's not good enough. Many pre-meds may start off slowly, but quickly, we'll have to move our GPA in the right direction. The average matriculant GPA is 3.77, so we have a ton of room here. You'll have to learn the evidence-based practices for studying. Space repetition, active learning, adequate exercise, adequate sleep, adequate nutrition. And more importantly, you'll have to apply all of that very quickly. There's no sugarcoating this. If you do not raise your GPA, you truly have no chance. Now, let's transition to your resume. There's nothing remarkable here. You know that and I do too. You're a hospital volunteer who does very little on her shifts. Your research is some data entry position that you don't care about. You spent a total of 12 hours volunteering at the soup kitchen. And to be clear, this is fine with where you're at. It doesn't mean that you're stupid or you're lazy or that you have no chance of becoming a doctor, but things have to change. This is generic, mediocre, and says nothing memorable about you. I can't differentiate you, Anya, from the multiple tens of thousands of applications that I've read. And when you don't stand out, you get rejected. So let's start fixing this. While it seems overwhelming and daunting, building a competitive application around your interests and your narrative not only makes you more competitive, it's the most fun and satisfaction you will ever have throughout your pre-med journey. Everything you want, that white coat, that acceptance, is on the other side of this initial jump of pain and discomfort. First, you'll have to be able to define what impressive or good enough looks like. You can ask people like your advisor, but I think we know how that conversation is going to go. Instead, find real applications from real medical students who got into real dream medical schools. Our application database, linked in the description box below, is eight full medical school applications you can access for free so you can know exactly what it takes to get into a strong medical school. Step two is to honestly assess your extracurriculars. Truthfully, if it were up to me, if we scrapped all these extracurriculars and started brand new, I don't think we would miss too many of the old extracurriculars. And step three is the hardest one. It's to have the courage to make a change and take that leap. Samantha is passionate about patients with disabilities and dance. She teaches ballet classes to people with physical limitations. Mary cares about people with neurodivergent conditions like autism, and she also loves art. She started an accessibility program at her local museum to help patrons who have autism experience the art in a safe and enjoyable way. Have the courage to search for professors and other people who share your passions and interests. It's okay if you start by thinking that you care about people experiencing homelessness and realize that maybe that isn't your passion. That's what happened to me, in fact. And if you're not sure where to start, an easy framework is the three Ps. People, problems, and 
populations. Let's say your uncles and aunts had issues with heart disease and strokes. And from those experiences, you become more passionate about East Asians and cardiovascular health. And it's okay if there's nothing in your community that has a program specifically designed for that. You can just start with one person, say one of your aunts who is interested in learning a little bit more about heart health. From there, grow your impact intentionally and consistently. Make a real impact in one person and the rest of the people will follow. It's also okay if you're interested in boring things like teaching and mentorship. So was Sal Khan, the founder of Khan Academy. Start with breadth. Try everything that is even remotely interesting. Eventually, something will stick. Above all, chase impact, not titles and not uniqueness. It's normal to start with five extracurricular activities, each taking four hours a week, and then transitioning to two activities, each taking 10 to 20 hours a week because you found what you really care about. You found what really works for you. It is no surprise that you're making no difference. Remember, you're competing with other pre-meds who are taking gap years, taking time off to work full time. That's thousands of hours every single year on extracurriculars they care about. You don't have to do that, but you do have to understand that greatness takes time. Now, once you do an extracurricular more and you've exhausted more and more and more, then figure out how to do it better. Then when you figure out how to help your community even better, do more of that. The framework for impact is very simple. And remember, not everything has to be pre-med related. If you love film, get inspired by films like Endgame and Extremis. These are two award-winning documentaries that made it to Netflix that convey what end-of-life care really looks like. Greatness translates and the hobbies of excellence carry over from one hobby to medicine. If you're world-class in film, it's not a far reach to say that you'll likely be world-class in medicine. Anya, if you do all of this correctly, you'll start seeing your resume change. It'll begin to capture who you are and what you care about. And this is different from your resume right now and the other tens of thousands of pre-meds who haven't intentionally or proactively built their resumes. They've reactively said yes to things that med schools may want to see. Their application will be a hodgepodge of a bunch of random extracurriculars, and when it's time to apply, they'll try to string things together and act as if it were planned from the beginning. But whatever underlying story they spin, it will never fit perfectly because they were never designed to be together in the first place. Building a competitive med school application takes a ton of work. And yes, while you have years to do it, I want you to feel the urgency today to get started and make real progress. Your application, as it stands now, has no chance of getting into medical school. You have to earn it, and you have to make these changes over the next couple of years to get there. Or you won't. No one is forcing you, and maybe this video has shown you exactly what it takes. Maybe this video has made you truly understand that this price you have to pay is not one that you're willing to pay. Again, that doesn't make you lazy or stupid. In fact, it just makes you a grown adult who can make their own decisions. That in and of itself takes a level of intellect and maturity. So if you decide with going forward and applying to medical school, take it seriously today. Getting rejected and reapplying is harder than everything else that we've talked about in this video. Every year you reapply, you need to prove yourself even more since you need to demonstrate that something has changed since the last time you've been rejected. Anya, I hope this was helpful. This was far too much to put into a TikTok message, but I had a lot to say and I wanted to get it to you. Have a great day.